So are there definite yeses and nos for how we're going to handle HRT as your prescriber? And do we want to do something bad? No, I don't. I don't want to give you uterine cancer. And that's one of the things in my brain that I have to do hard education about. Hi, I'm your local OBGYN. I love women and let's talk about it. So when we are giving you hormones, first we have to make sure that there's no like definite like medical no-no, okay? Like do you have active ongoing cancer in some sort of gynecologic or female oriented way? Okay, those would be like reasons not to do it. An active DVT, liver disease, all right? We go down and there's other reasons like unexplained vaginal bleeding and so forth and so on. Uh, family history of breast cancer is not a no-no. Having a distant DVT related to like something surgical or something that we call provoked, all right, that's not an absolute no-no. So, you know, like there's, there's things. The big thing that I have the responsibility to educate on is like, I want to give you endometrial cancer. And if I'm not very, very specific in how I educate a woman on how to use HRT, I could inadvertently set things up as a problem. If you don't have a uterus, you know, like pass go. Like, what do you want? You want just the estrogen? Do you want estrogen? And then maybe down the road to see if progesterone like is a good fit for you or not. If you have a uterus, okay, you need both. It's like a non-negotiable or you need estrogen and something that will protect your uterus. The reason is that we don't want to overgrow that lining in a woman who does not have a cycle because there's no way to safely clean it out. So you need something to suppress the chance of that lining growing so that that lining doesn't get old, aged, abnormal, precancerous or cancerous, which, you know, I'm not here to cause that. I'm here to help your symptoms and prevent that.